in this cartoony We're invading your TV We're comic dispensers We crack up all the censors On action adventures Get a dose of comedy So here's at the acres It's a whole wide world apart Our home sweet home It stands alone A cartoon work of art The script were rejected Expect the unexpected On tiny toon adventures It's about to start They're furry, they're funny They're fast and bust, they're bunny Montana Max has money What is going on, everybody? I am your host for the Geeks Five Ever podcast. That is right. I am Jesse Goku, the King of Mexico, el oso, el campeón de la gente, and aquí estamos con Geeks Five Ever. Joining me today are my other co-host, the host with the most, Jace, Hello. the man with the plan who runs the skinny, Sonic, Heyo. the one, the only, the champion of the people, SJ. And joining us is a very special guest, a man that has made so many of our childhoods electrifying. <laughs> the one, and I'm sorry if I get your last name wrong, the one, the only, Tom Ruger. Hey. <laughs> uh, oh, safe. Hi, it's really good to be here. Hi. Thank <laughs> First off, let us say thank you very much for being on the show. This is like when when you were when you were joining the chat, we were like <gasps> gasp. <laughs> oh the thrill of it all, yeah. No, it's it's nice to meet all of you and uh we'll have a good time. Uh, we'll chat about stuff. That's yeah. that's right. We're gonna this is gonna be a great podcast. What was the uh we just had a little mute session. We were all quiet for about a minute or so. What was going on then? Okay, so um in the be I don't know if you've ever seen other podcasts that go live. Whenever they go live, they click on the go live button and then they'll sit they'll sit there staring dead at the camera for a few seconds and then they'll ask the very question, Are we live? I think we're live. Oh, what's up everybody? We're live. <laughs> I absolutely do not like that. Very good. It's very unprofessional. So whenever we go live and we meet our microphones, we actually have like a pick, like a thing that says podcast starting soon. And we have a song oh, that plays, okay. but this time around, we didn't do that. You guys couldn't see or hear it, but we actually played the, the openings for tiny tune adventures and animaniacs. Oh, excellent. That's beautiful. And I, and I wrote, uh, I wrote those. So that's, that's perfect. Right. Awesome. <laughs> so let me, let, let's just go ahead and ask you just right off the bat. So you wrote, but it, it says you're also create, you're credited for creating Animaniacs. That's right. And Tiny Toon Adventures. Uh, more Animaniacs than Tiny Toons, but I, yes, I was definitely a creator on, on both of those. Uh, uh, 
Tiny Toons, they had a title uh, before I arrived. They had a Tiny Toons. But uh, Animaniacs, I mean, I came up with the title, the characters, the show, the concept, the, the whole picture and the, the different franchises. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, not that there aren't great writers and artists involved in all sorts of aspects of, of the shows. But uh, I, at that point in my career, I had worked on Tiny Toons, made Tiny Toons. And uh, when the time for a new show came along, uh, Mr. Spielberg and Gene McCurdy, who was the president of Warner Brothers Animation, they came to me and they said, what do you want to do next? And Animaniacs is what I wanted, wanted to do next. Um, just a couple questions about the... Uh, uh, what about Freakazoid? Are you, are you one of the creators of Freakazoid or is that just... Freakazoid was created by uh, Paul Dini and Bruce Timm. Mm -hmm. And they were working with uh, Steven uh, Spielberg on creating a, a comedy superhero show. And at that point, Animaniacs was having a great success. And Steven, I think, was pressing for them to make it just like Animaniacs or very similar to. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Bruce uh, wanted to go more semi-serious superhero with comedy elements. And Steven said, no, I, I just want it to be a, a wacky comedy. And so Bruce said, well, you should get Ruger and that group to do it. So. That's what happened there. Uh, we we uh, we were tossed the property of Freakazoid in January of the year it went on the air. So we only had like eight eight months to pull something out of the, our hat. So we uh, so I went home that weekend and just wrote anything I could think of that was funny that could happen in a superhero show, and I wrote like ninety pages of just insanity. I mean you know, just anything. And uh, that was, uh, that became like the pilot script. <laughs> it was like 90 pages <laughs> of uh, just, you know, the heroes who lunch, you know, the, uh, it was like old heroes who were getting together at a deli. Um, anything that we could insert this, this new superhero, this crazy uh, freakazoid into, uh, we did sketches. I said, uh, you know, uh, is, Sidekick Chronicles and Freakazoid has his has his uh, his hand be his sidekick, you know, hand man. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, and then Paul Rugg and John McCann did the same thing. They wrote a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, so we developed. We took the, the the inception of Freakazoid, the the concept of a funny superhero, and we then developed it into the crazy show that it became. It's a great I show. I, I love, yeah. I love Freakazoid. I remember <laughs> at one of the anime conventions we went to. I'm like, dude, let's just run around the con. And we started doing the whole hand gesture. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and my friend's like, um, Goku, Jesse, what are you doing? I'm flying. Leave me alone. <laughs> we, I, I do love that bit. We were going to uh, Paul Rugg and I did a virtual. Uh, uh, Comic Con up with Freakazoid. Uh, it's it's like a, you can see it online. You can go to uh, a Freakazoid Facebook page, or you can go to YouTube, and it's like a 90 minute virtual Comic Con where Mitch Shower and Paul Dini and Rug and I. But originally, we went to an agent and we said we want to rent a hotel and do a, a Freakazoid convention, just nothing but Freakazoid. And uh, and one of the <laughs> bits we were gonna do. And we talked to this hotel in Burbank. At one point, we wanted all the conventioneers to get up out of their seats, and we were going to fly around the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> everyone from, from the convention and the hotel said, "You're you're not coming here." <laughs> right. Uh, um, the re okay. So earlier, when I had asked you about the Freakazoid and Tiny Tunes, because we. Uh, I was researching you on the internet and I went to IMBD and I went to <laughs> Wikipedia and on IMBD, it has you credited as the creator of tiny tunes and freakazoid. That's yeah. why it asked. But on, on, uh, on, on wiki, it says that you're a producer writer slash uh, senior. Well, I think, I think if you look at, if you read the Wiki Wikipedia, definitely, it, it lists me as the creator of Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, Pink in the Brain, uh, 
I think, I don't know what it was, it's Freakazoid. And that's accurate. I mean, I am, I, I created those things. For Freakazoid, it says writer, developer, and senior producer. Yeah, that's correct. You have a laundry list of things you have worked on. You have, you've been a writer and an animator for, you were a writer for Flash Gordon. And have you, you ever were, seen that? You call that writing? <laughs> I mean, we didn't say what was on was the laundry the list. 80s. We just said it was a list. <laughs> it was the eighties when people were more fo focused with their hair than the actual that was story. One of, uh, that's one of the very first things I wrote professionally. Uh, a, a, free, uh, a Flash Gordon episode with uh, he had a, like there was a dragon in it, a little like uh, pet dragon guy. I forget his name. And uh, yeah, they got you the credit. I learned, <laughs> I remember I learned, there's some word I learned during that process, but uh, I forget. We have, a, uh, uh, we have a couple of questions in the yes. comment section. Uh, we do, our viewers are, they, they can comment and ask questions during our podcast. Uh, shout out to Didi, Zarek, Jesse, uh, Car uh, Pachinko, uh, Michael, and uh, they ask, they have two questions for you. Uh, I'm pretty sure one of them you can't really talk about just yet. I might be able to talk about it. You never know. <laughs> maybe, oh. maybe. Uh, uh, so one of them is, who is your favorite character in Animaniacs? The second one is, will they bring back Freakazoid, Good Feathers, Tiny Toons, and others back? Well, uh, my favorite characters, um, that's really tough. I, I you know, it's like, you know, which child, which is your favorite child? <laughs> it's Wacko. <laughs> I'll leave Wacko behind to be <laughs> murdered by the Nazis. No, I'm not going to do that. So uh, I, I, I really, you know, Animaniacs is my favorite series uh, that I was involved in in my career. So Yakko, Wacko, and Dot, Pinky and the Brain, uh, you know, they're, they're, there's a lot of my DNA in them. Uh, other people's DNA is involved in lots of different things in the Animaniacs, too. Uh, I mean, Sherry Stoner is sort of Slappy Squirrel in my, in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, but Yakko, Wacko, and Dot, I, I, uh, I drew some stuff in college, these three platypi. And uh, so design-wise, those characters are very much like my platypi, platypuses uh, from college, except instead of, they have little round beaks and those become the cheeks and there's a little red nose with, uh, for Yakka Wack on top. So design wise, I had a lot to do with them. And then personality, uh, I, was doing a, I, was, I was doing a lot of Marx Brothers then. I was heavy duty into Marx Brothers. I was like Marx Brothers every night, you know? So I was very high on the Marx Brothers. And so a lot of Groucho got into Yakko, but then my three sons were inspirational in just the way that they would interact with each other and and how they would sort of drive me crazy. So that was <laughs> in, in creating those characters. Uh, um, Pinky in the Brain, I, mean, I was a huge Laurel and Hardy fan. So I had Groucho for Yakko, but Laurel and Hardy were big. and. Uh, and I, I was thinking about that the other night. I mean, there's a very similar relationship. I mean, Stan Laurel's sort of an idiot and he's different than uh, Pinky. He, Pinky's more boisterous and laughy, but they're both idiots. And Mr. Hardy, uh, Oliver Hardy, he, he thinks he's smart and he's not, but he thinks he is. Uh, the brain is a little different in that he is smart, but he manages to undo himself each time. So, uh, but Pinky and the Brain came from these two guys that worked at our studio, uh, Tom Mitten and Eddie Fitzgerald, who were in the next office from me, and uh, they would get together, and uh, the, Tom Mitten would whisper, he was very quiet, he was saying things, very you have to do it this way. And Eddie was boisterous, and he was, <laughs> he literally said the word nerf. And uh, so writing, coming up with a plot for them was sort of like, well, they're natural. I mean, 
here's this little, there's this guy with a quiet voice kind of making plans. And then the other guy's just reacting with these hysterical laughs. And uh, so I thought, what are they doing? They're probably plotting, they're plotting something in there. They're, they got some plan. Maybe, what, do, what if they were taking over the world? Oh my God. And uh, so then I took the designs of the studio staff members that were made by Bruce Tim. And Bruce Tim did an awesome caricature of Tom Minton and an awesome caricature of Eddie Fitzgerald. And I literally I took those and put ears on them and red noses. And that's where the voices, that's where the characters came from. Wow. Sonic is. He, he, he's talking to his folks. He uh, was being nice and of, turned of, off his mic my, this time. Uh, I was because one of my questions was like, because the Good Feathers, you have Joe Pesci, kind of like just play himself as one of the pigeons. Well, that's that's uh, yeah, the voice, the, a, a voice caricature of Joe Pesci. Yes, the mockumentary. <laughs> it was one of my. It's one of my favorite skits. Whenever at the very end of it, he's always like, "What are you saying? You saying I'm this, that, yada yada?" And then he's like, "That's it." And then he starts, yeah, you know, beating up the other pigeon. I, I, I'm not really good with this. Uh, hang on one second. I'll be right back. Uh -oh. uh, where are they? Oh, I know they're around here somewhere. Oh, there they are. Okay, yeah. He's got oh. an action figure of the Goodfellers. No, I don't, but Chick Venera did uh, that Joe Pesci voice so beautifully. Oh, and, wow, uh, okay. Uh, and uh, John Mariano did uh, Bobby, and of Bobby. course Maurice LaMarche did Squint. But the Bobby and the Pesto, th those are the two, like, voices that you know they're iconic i mean pesci and de niro those are voices that everybody recognizes so uh getting chick venera and john mariano to do those caricatures uh those voice impressions so brilliantly uh really kind of sold that thing i thought it was him honestly like yeah. this whole time i like i am today years old when i finally found out it wasn't him <laughs> I thought it was like we were having a conversation about it last night. Me and some of my buddies over the phone, and I was so dead certain it was him. Well, it was dead on. I mean, Chick Venera's uh, pesto. Uh, uh, no, yeah, he's squit. Chick Venera's uh, Joe Pesci is just just brilliant, and uh, he was he was the lead in uh, the Malagro Beanfield Wars, a Robert Redford directed movie. Chick Venera is the actual uh, lead of that movie. So check that out sometime. Um, just real quick, one of my friends wanted me to ask you, um, do you remember working on the 1978, 79 Hanna-Barbera Godzilla cartoon? Yes, that was my first job, as not as a writer, but as an artist in Los Angeles. I came in 1978. I, I started work at Hanna-Barbera. I had a one-month trial period. I arrived. I was a, to be an assistant animator in between her. And my first job, first day on the job was in betweening Godzilla. And uh, yeah, the Godzilla power hour. Joe Barbera had sold hours and hours and hours of animation to all the networks that that spring. And I arrived in the spring and I got a job there because they were hiring anyone that could hold a pencil because they had so much work to do. And the big problem with the Godzilla Power Hour is that I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna reach over here and grab. So we didn't use Sharpies, we used, you know, we had paper. But yeah. So normally your line would be like, you know, I mean, this is hideous, but you, normally the line would be about that, about that thin. Mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't be thick, but on the Godzilla show, the design by Doug Wildey, by the way, who uh, worked on Johnny Quest, he designed the Godzilla characters. And so the line had to be, to follow Doug Wildey's thing it had to be about that thick. Wow. <laughs> we had to get these we had to get these pencils that were so soft so that you could dig in and really make a big thick line, but you couldn't it, it didn't satisfy Doug Wildey's model. So you had to do like you had to do it two or three times uh, back to back the line. So then they would Xerox these drawings that you've made. And Xerox, the, the, as you probably know, when you Xerox uh, something that has a lot of black in it, 
in the middle of the black, it'll go gray or even white because yeah. the shoe can't deal with the big, thick blackness. So this show cost Hanna-Barbera a fortune because they couldn't just Xerox the lines. They had to not only Xerox them, but then they had to go back and paint them in mm -hmm. the lines. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it was a mess. <laughs> like extra steps. Godzilla Power Hour was also the first uh, they, they gave me a test to be an animator. Or, you know, I wanted to be an animator, so they'd give you a test, and uh, they gave me the scene of all the characters of the Godzilla Power Hour climbing out of a hole in the ground. And uh, now, if you look at Hanna Barbera shows, they always they cut away. They like, oh, we better get out of this hole, and they'll start climbing out of the hole. And then mm -hmm. they'll cut to above the hole and they'll be standing there. Oh, we're all out of the hole now. Uh, <laughs> which I thought, oh, can I just do that? They said, no, we want you to animate it, them coming up out of the hole. So it was like, you know, you put your elbow and your arm up and you're, you push yourself up and then you, you bring your leg around and uh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> For giant fictional creatures. Can, can, yeah, can I just draw a yogi? <laughs> Um, well, because it was interesting because I remember watching the Godzilla one as a kid growing up. And I remember, like, the theme song. It was like, Godzilla's 30 stories high, breathing fire. And I remember they mentioned that he's taller than most of the buildings. But then there's, like, one episode where he's the same size as a T-Rex and he's fighting the T-Rex. Yeah. Uh, I was just like... Yeah. I wasn't in the writing department yet. <laughs> I would have fixed that. It's like, no, but as an animator, you're like, okay, how, how big do I draw him? Just, well, you see, I didn't know that in the main title they were saying he was 30 mm -hmm. stories tall. I was just, I was there as a worker. I was a bee, uh, you know, uh, a, a, just the honeybee doing his job. So uh, I was just grateful to have a job. So, so we can't, so we can't blame you for it. Okay. <laughs> I was involved in the story, but uh, in that show, one thing I really love to do is. I would get a scene for the Jenna of the Jungle segments, which, which were the in-between segments. There'd be like a Godzilla cartoon or a half of a cartoon, like it would be like a, you know, a cliffhanger. Then they'd go to a Jenna of the Jungle cartoon, which was Tarzan as a girl, but a beautiful girl, shapely blonde. And uh, I really enjoyed drawing her. That's all. <laughs> Uh, she would be running she'd be running and she was just beautiful and athletic and her hair would be going and fabulous uh the stories were stupid but you, know. <laughs> you weren't in the writing yet so no i wasn't in the writing oh okay okay i'm, I'm looking at it right now jana <laughs> oh it doesn't have any pictures oh um, it has the uh croc uh croc co a crocodile kachi a monkey pichu oh, that she had Pichu was her monkey friend, or a little like a not a gerbil. <laughs> it was like some uh, marmoset or something. I forget what it was. Slither, a snake. Uh, Real uh, creative names. Love it. <laughs> yeah, Jenna of the jungle. I am Jenna of the jungle. You know, it's like one of those things. Oh wow! Like, they... I'm Tarzan. Let's just take that opening and give it to her. I am Jenna. Just the a little exact uh, same show. Just a little. Uh little ins uh just a little info they actually made a comic book out of it in 2007 Jana of the jungle yes oh, they did they didn't ask me for a story <laughs> oh. it's okay you, you you worked should've. on you worked on much more better things yeah <laughs> uh one of the questions in the comments asked uh mason mason perry says when's 13 ghosts of scooby-doo getting rebooted um for those of you that don't know, the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo was actually just recently ended ended with a movie. Mm -hmm. Came out last year. So it, it's very doubtful that they would do a reboot of something that just ended after so many years. Yes, I would think. <laughs> you would hope. <laughs> well, I don't know. I did, they didn't call me on that either. That And that was a mistake. They should have called Mitch Schauer, who, who did uh, create that show, to... Uh, wrap it up and I, I wrote you know i was a story editor on that but mitch shower was the the mastermind of 13 ghosts of scooby-doo and that they didn't go to him and say how would you wrap up this 13th ghost business um it's too bad 
it, it's I don't, I don't know if you've seen the movie but it kind of like it kind of doesn't make sense because in the beginning it's like oh I came to get y'all because we never captured the 13 ghosts they kind of like they were capturing the ghosts and they're like ah, screw it I'm gonna go do something else <laughs> so that's yeah. how the movie begins they got distracted after 12 <laughs> after they had like Doctor Strange show up <laughs> that's who the guy looked like <laughs> Yeah, Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah, Vincent Price originally voiced him. Yeah, I didn't. I did not see their uh, their, their. They were Bogle and Weird in it. The uh, two funny ghosts. Mm -hmm. Were they in the the new movie? The uh, uh, I haven't seen it. You know the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo movie. Right, right, right. The the movie yeah. that ended the show. I haven't seen the movie. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, it was, I, uh, I heard I heard bad reviews. <laughs> it was called uh, uh, Scooby Doo and the Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost. Yeah. Uh, oh. To answer Mason Perry, uh, your question, you can actually find it on Vudu, Amazon Prime, or anywhere you can get your digital movies mm -hmm. uh, for rent or purchase. On Amazon Prime. Oh, I I, I, I can I can see it then. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Bogle and Weird. If if they're not in it, I mean, I, I would suspect they are in it because they're crucial to the the box that holds the thirteen ghosts. Uh, mm -hmm. and they were voiced by uh, Artie Johnson and uh, I'm blanking on the other guy, but they were very funny. <laughs> As a writer for some of the most iconic cartoons of all time, like like what what kind of challenges did you face? Like okay, like you know, because I'm pretty sure, like, do they use different writers for each episode, or is it the same writers for every episode? Well, again, I don't know what show you're talking about. Any show in general. Oh. Well, any, uh, they're different. I mean, like, when I was at Filmation, uh, making Black Star, uh, I, I was, like, the head writer on that show. So I would write four of them out of the 13, and then... Uh, Michael Reeves wrote a couple. Uh, Mark Zickrey wrote a couple. So there are maybe three or four or five writers on a show. Mm -hmm. um, Animaniacs, where we're, we were creating, say, 65 half hours over a, a short period of time, we had probably uh, seven writers like working on it full time. And then we have a few, uh, a few freelance people coming in. Um, but uh, what was the question? No, it's just like, the, it was just a pretty general question. Like, as a writer, do you work on like, like you kind of already answered it, but the question is like, when you work on episodes, do you have, do you work with the same writers on every episode? Or is it like, okay, you're, this team's going to work on these episodes and this team's going to work on these episodes and it trades off every now and then? Well, you know, there, there are a lot of different ways uh, to go about these shows. I mean, right now, the big thing is you have a writer's room and, everybody gets together and they kick around a story and they, they make the story come together with like seven or eight writers in the room and it just happens then. We've never, I, I've never done that and I've never found that to be, well, in the couple of times we tried anything like that, it was always sort of like, it never kind of panned out. Mm -hmm. So on the shows that I worked on, Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, Pinky the Brain, Freakazoid, uh, I get together with the writers and we'd talk about different ideas that each writer thought would be fun to work on. And, uh, and I'd say, Oh, that is fun. Yes. Let's work on that. You should work. You should go write that. You should go write that into a premise or into a, you know, start the script up right away. We, we had very little interference from outside sources. We had very little input from like the network. We, we were, we were not pursuing input from anyone, but, the creative team on the show. So we had a great deal of freedom. Now, not most shows don't have that anymore. It's like you have to come up with, you know, a notion. And then the network sees, reads the notion, which is like a sentence, you know, it's like Yakko loses his ears. I mean, I don't know what it might be, but, uh, and then they would give approval for the note. Yes, let's, let's see a premise. And then, oh, they approve the premise. Then they'll see an outline. Oh, okay. The outline would well, fix this, and now let's see the script. So by the time you get to the script, in that process, people are so sick of the story. The network is so tired with it, and the writers fatigue. 
that no one gives a living crap about it anymore. Oh, wow. So we tried to avoid that by, if we had a good idea for a story like, okay, we're gonna do the anvil chorus playing and we're gonna have anvils drop on Plucky's head for every clang from the, the song, we're gonna do it at the Hollywood Bowl and that's the cartoon idea, that's the concept. And to write a seven minute cartoon for that, uh, you don't want to write it a bunch of times. You just want to, that's the premise. And then we wrote the seven minute cartoon and we, we storyboarded it. Uh, you don't want to have to reread these scripts because you'll start, the minute you hear a joke and you laugh, that's the last time you made laugh at that joke because then it's not fresh anymore. There's no surprise anymore. That's why, uh, having scripts go through lots of rewrites, it just fatigues everything, everyone, and it kind of wrecks the script. Mm -hmm. No one wants to hear the same joke twice and no one wants to tell the j same joke 30 times because the person wasn't listening. Yeah, it's like a magic trick. You do the magic trick once and they go, oh, that's great. And then do it again. And then they're gonna see your- the, the, You palm the, the coin. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna see that you're really misdirecting them. <laughs> uh, okay, so just off topic, off. Like I said, we said this earlier. We want to thank you once again for joining us because we know you had other plans today. Well, the Dodgers are on. Let me. Uh, I'll, They're uh, winning. Are they? What, <laughs> do you have a score? Yeah, it's one nothing. Top of top of the third. That's right. Wow. We're gonna as we continue the podcast, the we will also we were gonna make sure to give you a play by play. What's going on? Well, they're playing in Arlington, so yeah, they're playing yeah. in Dallas. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so you guys probably were rooting for Houston against uh, the Rays. Is that true? I'm in uh, Dallas. I had nothing to root for. <laughs> I don't. I'm not a sports person. I don't care to be totally uh, honest. Sorry. I would have. <laughs> I would have liked to see Houston uh, win UFC. just so. WWE fan? AEW. Oh. <laughs> I was rooting for Houston just because I wanted to see the Dodgers get the revenge. <laughs> it would have been, like been like an evil good type of uh, game. Yeah, like, no one but, likes the Houston. But I was scared that... If Astros are the heels. They're the NWO. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, no, we were... We were we really, really wanted to have you on here, but we really wanted to work with your schedule. I'm like, okay, no, no. And then... Uh, SJ was like, oh, he's watching a game. Oh, he's watching a game. Ah, okay. He, he, okay, we'll do it another day. Let him watch his game. You know it's what? I find that when I don't watch, I'm you much better. less stressed out. Because watching the game is, uh, for me, very stressful. Yeah. Bellinger gets up and he strikes out, and I want to kill the TV. <laughs> yeah, Why yeah. couldn't the TV have helped him? <laughs> right. The superstition. Like, if you're not watching, they're better. And if you're watching, oh, that's, that's when they mess up. Well, this is Houston. Whether I watch or not, they always suck. So they cheat. <laughs> I, I, I pretend the Dodgers suck. I said, honey, the Dodgers are winning. You know, I heard from upstairs, the Dodgers suck. <laughs> I, I, I'm a bet she's an Angels fan. <laughs> no, no. She, she, uh, she actually was very close with a guy named Steve Yeager, who was married to one of her best friends. Steve Yeager was a catcher for the Dodgers back in the – the, you know the big days mm -hmm. oh, okay yeah, so she went to like every dodger game with her friend and you know sit with the wives and eat the the nasty hot dogs so she can't eat hot dogs anymore that's one thing and <laughs> uh she claims the dodgers suck <laughs> well they haven't won in like 33 years so <laughs> kind of right <laughs> but maybe this could be the one they'll do it <laughs> by could beating be a one. team with an eighth of their payroll and I asked her not to say, yeah, that's right. They, they, the Rays are underpaid compared to the Dutch. I've asked right. her uh, until the end of the series not to say that the Dodgers suck. And, uh, and I promise that? that if they win the series, I won't be a fanatic next year. Ah. <laughs> she just lied to her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, to our commenters, if you have any questions, remember, you can ask anything. We will address your comments. Just kind of be respectful, please. Because that's all we're asking. Yeah. Uh, oh, we do have one question for you. Oh, what would they say? What would they say that would be disrespectful? Oh, no. Oh, where shall we start? <laughs> sometimes they'll come on here and troll uh, SJ. Yep. Because oh. she's a big Transformers fan. So they'll like make fun of her for that. Oh, they'll oh. make fun of me and my 
every time I, I make a joke, I always end it with Mexican. And so I, they'll say that in the comments. <laughs> Even when I said like you were coming on, Jace was like, but what do they have in relation to Transformers? That's got, why are you following them? Unless yeah. it's Transformers dirt, you have no reason to follow them. I was like, I made joke. that joke once. Yeah, when, when she you told did. us about you, we were like, okay, what do they have to do with Transformers? And was, <laughs> that was the big question. And I was like, guys, I actually do have other interests besides it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Ninja Turtles doesn't count. Uh, just, <laughs> just, I have to ask you, of all the items behind you, yes. which item is the most valuable? And can you show it to me? Yes, I can. Actually. Valuable or expensive? Uh, no, no, no. What, one or the other? Because one is a giant game cabinet that he doesn't use. <laughs> we can say oh, things okay. about him now. He doesn't have his headphones on. He, yep. He's going to grab like four things. Okay. And this one has sentimental value. One thing that I think is he's gone too. He's, oh, he oh, disappeared in the us. forest. Right. I got, I got Marty McFly right here. There you go. <laughs> All right, you so have I have two items. All right, one of them has a very. They're both very sentimental. Um, they're not expensive. That's right. Oh, okay. So I grew up uh, <laughs> when I watched Dragon Ball Z in Mexico. It was in Spanish. So I had one. I met one of the main voice actors, and I got the wallet autographed. Oh, that's nice. Very and. Good. It's really cool because, and I like the English voice actor will not sign it oh. because it's autographed by the Spanish voice actor because the English voice actor is kind of a dick. Yeah, I you would think say of that's the C true. word that would cover it too. <laughs> uh, this one right here, it's the same character. It's Goku. Uh, this one was a gift from a. This one was a gift from a Hold friend. Hold it closer to the camera. I want to see the face. Yeah. It's supposed that, to be a special edition. That's beautiful. But I think they're just being lazy. They didn't feel like painting it, and they just labeled special edition on the box. <laughs> but uh, really nicely done. What's it made out of? It's it's just uh, uh Probably PVC. Yeah, it's just PVC. Um, this thing. I got this thing now. I'm told it's worth something. I don't know. It's oh, you can't see. It. Uh, oh uh, yeah. Superman. Wait. I think it's voice. kind of. I think it's kind of ironic. We have Goku and Superman on the stream now. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it comes off. This was, so cool. this, was, this was, I think, used in the studio only as like a model, you know. Wow. wow. It, it's kind of, nice. it's kind of ironic that you brought out Superman because <laughs> these two characters, Goku and Superman, are like two of the most requested characters to fight each other. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, like the reason why this one has a lot of sentimental value to me, though, it was a gift from a friend before he passed away. Ah. Uh, so right before he passed away, the same year. A few months before he passed away, he gave me this, and then he, he died. So it has a lot of sentimental value to me. That's one of the ones that I keep. A lot of these are gifts from my friends, but, you know, they're still alive. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Can you give me one minute? Yes, sir. Sure. Do you mind if I uh, – I'll be gone for like half a minute. He's going to go wandering in the forest, guys. <laughs> oh, he disappeared. Got that. Into the woods. He goes. Hey, boo-boo. Hey, wait, hey, what's boo -boo. that? You said it. You, you look to the left. What's that? Shia LaBeouf. Oh no! <laughs> the cannibal yeah. in the woods. He's coming. <laughs> it's Shia LaBeouf. Cries and Shia. People outside. If Shia LaBeouf appears, oh, that's it. Podcast over. <laughs> oh God! It's just it's Shia LaBeouf, but covered in blood. It's like no. Oh. I've got this. Oh, no. uh, there's something. This is uh, uh. Let's see. How do you hold it up? How do I? So this is oh, a guy named Doug oh. Wildy, who wow. I think cool. the same guy that designed Johnny Quest and Godzilla. And uh, that's a submariner that he drew. Anyway, cool. But I've got, and let me just get, get one of those. Yeah, I'll get that. I love how they guess. We will address yeah, everybody's uh, comments and questions in, in a, as soon as we get a chance. Now, this is this is probably the rarest thing I have. <gasps> this is a, a maquette. Uh, oh, wow. Aww. Buster. <laughs> funny. From I have never movie. seen something like that before. Well, it's, it, cool. it, 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 it was only, there were only like three sets made. So I've got, uh, here, uh, I'm going to move the camera. Oh, no, it'll just go crazy. <laughs> <Back on. Yeah. laughs> Disconnect. Well, I've got uh, most of the Tiny Toons characters in that film. Oh, wow, cool. that's beautiful. That, that looks really cool. Uh, when I drop dead, my kids can sell those and make a fun. Hey, <laughs> same thing. Whenever, if I go, all this, I actually, I have a DVD set for Dragon Ball Z that's worth $400 used. Wow. That's incredible. So it's, it's, how many seasons is that? Is that like eight there, or how many episodes? There's 292 episodes of the show, but they keep re-releasing it. 
like yeah. there's the Canadian dove, there's the Spanish dove, there's the oh. you know the What's American the Canadian dove. dove? <laughs> it was uh, Oops. it was through ocean. Uh, ocean. It's called Ocean, and uh, it Ocean's. Yes, it's English. It's in English, but the actors are from Canada. But they don't have accents. They, they the Goku like, just says a boot all I'm, I'm the going, time. I'm going to kick your boots, eh? <laughs> they, it's in so very English. polite. Why do they make more than one version in English. People it's got because the one company had it, and then Funimation oh, got it. Oh, the rights. It's the it's, it's the, the rights. The rights went to another company. Licensing. Mm -hmm. Very good. So it was weird. The Canadian one had ended in just handshakes, and there's no fighting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's can't the can't, the same cannot be same for the Funimation dub because it's a, a lot of U.S. That dub. One. <laughs> they they went and stole it from Mexico. <laughs> they really did. No, they didn't. They didn't steal it, but they couldn't get the <laughs> anime from Japan. Would not send it over, so they had to get the anime from Mexico. Why wouldn't Japan send it? Because they're really. They don't trust Picky. us. They don't trust them. Because <laughs> they told them flat out they didn't really trust them. Uh, oof. Like, you can dub it, yeah. but we're not going to give it to you. Yeah. Plus, they didn't have a lot of money to ship it over. So, well, um, so what do we do next? Oh, what no, we still, gotta, we still got a lot of questions. We, gotta, we, were, uh, we, questions. Were just, we were just showing off some toys. You know? Very good. I, I, I have <laughs> too much. Of nerds. I have, oh, it's Halloween. It's coming. And, uh, hey. I there you go. Perfect. I'm the kind of guy that like, man, I'm broke, but I'll still buy stuff like this on Amazon. Yeah, While, you're broke. <laughs> While you're broke. In my defense, they're only twenty dollars. If you're not broke, I've got a lot of sales to sell. So. <laughs> <laughs> we do, uh, we do have a couple of questions for you from the comment section because they they're actually really excited to see you here. Uh, did you come up with the polka dot joke in Animaniacs? <laughs> Polka dot joke. All right, uh, it's from which episode? We had a, uh, let me look it up. Uh, well, uh, that's what we got Sonic for. This is your, <laughs> I was gonna say. This is my moment. <laughs> this is uh, this is uh, the question is exactly what? Uh, did you come up with the polka dot joke in Animaniacs? I think it was either me or Stoner. Okay. Jerry Stoner or I did that. Uh, while Sonic looks that up, there's another one. It says, what's up with you being a creative no. consultant for Lunatics? Lunatics? Lunatics. Yeah. I will tell you, I, I, that's a, I really appreciate that question. So who, who asked that question? I will be right back. Mason Perry, from, uh, Mason Perry on YouTube asked the question. Thank, thank you, Mason. I, I wanted to... Uh, He's Canadian. To to <laughs> uh, what happened was... I went into Warner Brothers and I pitched a series called Lunatics. And it was, uh, and I was mixing Bugs and Daffy and Porky with uh, Yogi, uh, Huck, and Quick Draw. I was mixing, uh, and they owned those properties. Warner Brothers owned all those properties at that point. So I wanted to, uh, it was called Lunatics. And I call it mixed nuts, and I had a bunch of different uh, angles on it. So I went in and I, I pitched that, and they said, "Oh no, we don't want to do that." And then uh, the next month, they announced a show they called Lunatics, <laughs> which was the show I, I pitched. But it was this Lunatics Unleashed thing, and. Uh, so my agent called up and said, hey, Ruger was in there with Lunatics last month, and now you're making a show called Lunatics. And blah, blah, blah. So what they did was they, they gave me, they wrote us like a check for, you know, not much, and uh, listed me as a creative consultant. And th that's what that story is about. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I they, like your, they like your name, just not the concept. I had, I had not, and I had nothing to do with Lunatics Unleashed. Absolutely. Oh, okay, okay because it, it does have you credit it. I want oh, to... no, it does have me credited as the, a consultant, creative consultant. Yes, creative consultant. That's what it had, it had you credited. <laughs> that does not mean I did anything on it. Okay. It's like I'm listed as the executive producer of Tasmania. Yeah, you are. And, and uh, executive producer credits, like at, at Disney when I did 7D, I was the executive producer of that show, and I, I worked my butt off, and it was like being the writer, producer, story editor. It was like all that stuff. Of course, I had great story editors with Sherry and Deanna there, 
But so at Disney, executive producers really hands on. With Tasmania, Gene McCurdy and I were executive producers, and we just would stop by and say hi to Art Mattello now and then. <laughs> Yeah. Some Keep of the comments are saying that your lunatics actually sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I, we, I, I, oh, I should show you. I can't, I can't show you some of the artwork from that, but I, uh, if I can, I will. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, so there's two, there, there's, we want to talk a lot about, we, there's a lot to talk about Animaniacs and Tiny Toons, but there's a couple other shows that we want to get some in, like we want to get your insights on. It, oh, by the way, on the, um, the artwork for uh, Lunat for uh, Lunatics and for Mixed Nuts. Go to my uh, my blog, uh, Cartoonatics Blogspot, and uh, look up uh, Cartoonatics, and you'll find uh, look up uh, Mixed Nuts, and you'll find all this art with uh, Bugs meeting Fred Flintstone and all sorts of fun stuff. All right, Cartoonatics. We do have a question from you from the Black Table Podcast. A quick hey. uh, shout out to the Black Table Podcast. Hey guys. They had a couple. They're not watching. I don't. I don't know if they're watching. They they submitted the questions last night. <laughs> because they work until I think they get off at eight. Well, when they do watch it, hi. Um, they asked, "What was it like working on Batman Beyond? And did oh, you work on the episode where Static Shock made an appearance?" I did not. Aww. And uh, Batman Beyond was. I think I did a story on that. My experience with Batman is almost exclusively uh, Batman the Animated Series and Batman and Robin. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the time Batman Beyond uh, came by, I, I was like in Bed Bath and Beyond. I, 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you you so, brought so, up Batman. Uh, that that had this you know, glorious beginning where we had this great little film that Bruce and Tim had put together a little pilot. And uh, we had a lot of money from Warner Brothers. And, uh, but we had trouble with the stories. The network was really worried about the stories being too adult and too violent for their little kid audience. And we kept saying, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Love it it's violent and it's it's batman and it's grim and they're like no jokes i mean it was that's, just okay. that's what yeah. we want though I mean, that's, yeah. because, that's why batman is such a great cartoon now even today because yeah, of how I think great that's it was like, back then speaking of i'm pretty batman. sure that's like everybody's favorite cartoon from even yeah. if you're not a batman fan like that's probably one of everyone's to, favorite shows from they, this they generation wanted, yeah and we had to fight they wanted to fire us they, they the, the network this was a fox they said they, they basically were protesting and we didn't have the cover of steven spielberg because uh fox was uh we were making some of the animaniacs for fox and tiny tunes went over to fox and ultimately when they were calling the shots when fox was calling the shots on tiny tunes and animaniacs we were saying well and they would want us to change things we'd say well no steven really likes that and they couldn't get through to Stephen to verify it. Ah. <laughs> There's nothing they could do. And even if Stephen didn't like it, we would say, "Well, I'm pretty sure Stephen likes that." You know. So, uh, but the Batman show didn't have that luxury. They didn't have this this uh, eight hundred pound gorilla in the room. So they had they had to fight their fights on a show by show basis. And Alan Burnett and Paul Dini and Bruce Tim and Eric Radomski uh, worked really hard on that. I had a episode that the network i wrote it and uh, with uh garen wolf and uh it was called the the the, the one gun story and it was about oh yeah uh, 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 it was about mining ore out of the ground and melting it in lead and metal and making a gun out of this substance from the earth and uh following this one gun like from the drawer it was put in to like years later being pulled out and it turns out it's the gun that kills Bruce Wayne's parents. And uh, in the end, the gun is melted down again and it's used as a plaque to honor them in their graveyard. Uh, wow. So we just, Holy. We just follow, the camera is just on this gun the whole show for 22 minutes. And uh, the network was like, how about never? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that sounds like a great idea, though. Yeah, I, I have the script. It's pretty good. Sure. And, uh, oh, another, great. One of my favorite things that the network killed was uh, it was in the one that I wrote that um, was about the boss and the, the, there was a priest in it. I'm trying to come up with a title. Anyway, uh, Batman had to go into a Catholic church to meet with the priest who's the friend of this, this gangland leader and have the priest intervene uh, to go to this gangland leader, get him out of this criminal situation so that the city can be saved. And so Batman goes into the confessional and they have this conversation with the priest, you know, forgive me, you know, forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. And the guy opens the thing and he sees Batman there. He's like, what? And uh, so Batman explains the situation to him. And so then Batman gets up and leaves. And there are these two altar boys at, at, the, uh, at the altar lighting the candles. And, and they see Batman leaving. And he says, funny, I always thought he was Episcopalian. <laughs> <laughs> And and the network didn't let me do that one. Aww. Some of these are really good. I would yeah. love. Yeah, yeah, these are great. Uh, I'm interested. In that. Speaking of Batman, you were. <laughs> let me look. Let me look. <laughs> you were side, an executive. Side source, fat check. I, I I do have I do have bad memory. Uh, executive producer for Batman: Mask of the Phantasm. Yes. Yes. Alan Burnett wrote that. Uh, and uh you know oh, oh no <laughs> not again <laughs> we we heard it disconnect and there it went <laughs> coming back you wait for it to make that noise oh, there, again. It there, there we go Yay! Yay, you're back yeah okay right. yeah. It, was, it was it was um, fox trying to shut you off the, the, whole, <laughs> the whole gang made the show uh the reason uh gene mccurdy's name isn't listed there as executive producer is uh, something to do with the feature division not allowing an actual executive at the studio's name to be used. So I was oh. not an executive at the studio. I was a creative guy. So they allowed me to keep my executive producer role on that one. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. <laughs> and that movie, I, I, I loved the experience of going to see that movie with my three sons on Christmas Day, which is the day it came out. It came Came out on Christmas oh, Day. Is it a Christmas movie? And <laughs> it, <laughs> it was a Christmas movie, yes. So it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm in the local theater, and it's packed with kids in my in my my kids' grades. It's like it was like a targeted perfectly for everybody. My kids, everyone, all my kids' friends were there with their dads. So it was really just a weird and wild experience. It was like all the kids from my kids' school and their dads were in this one theater on Christmas Day watching this movie and loving it. And just like, ah, oh, they were like, it was a great audience experience. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's one of those animated movies that has aged really well. Because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of the old movies. They were great as a kid. They're not as... Like as I still like them as an adult, but they don't like hold their value. Where Batman: The Mask of the Phantasm is one of those movies that, as an adult, it had my even now as an adult, it still holds my attention one hundred percent of the time. Yeah, it, it again, it's got that serious tone to it. It doesn't goof around. Some of those Batman live action movies get almost like disco esque. They, they, there's like <laughs> the one with Jim Carrey as the Riddler. I mean, it's like, forever. <laughs> yes. We 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 constantly like uh, we constantly make fun of the one with Schwarzenegger. I love yeah. that one. <laughs> That's yeah. great. But anyway, they're they're very bright and vibrant and create. I mean, Tim Burton really had it down. I thought he he did a great job. And then mm -hmm. after he kind of bailed on it, it got a little bit funky. Joel but, Schumacher. <laughs> yeah. Joel Schumacher. That's right. Uh, but. Uh, the whole Batman experience was really uh, beautiful. Shirley Walker did awesome, jo an awesome job on the music. She had been working with uh, on, on the features too, but she broke off and, and did our series. Uh, so yeah, I've got nothing but great things to say. And one of my favorite ones was The Grey Ghost. Uh, I wrote that one with, again with Garen Wolf. And I love that one because uh, I mean, we had Adam West do the voice of yeah. the hero on TV when Bruce Wayne was a kid. 
he mm -hmm. watched this gray ghost and it was Adam West. And that was Bruce, Tim, and I both loved the Adam West version of Batman as corny as it was. So that was, <laughs> that was great. No shame in that. <laughs> yeah. That real trip having Adam West come in. And that one thing I did on that one that I insisted on, I said, Bruce, Tim, you have to be the toy make the toy guy. Because Bruce Tim had a lot of toys in his office, our producer, Bruce Tim. I said, you have to do the voice of the toy maker there. And uh, he really resisted, but he went along with it. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question for you from the comments section. Jess, it says, "How many?" And you know, I don't. You probably can't answer this one, but it says, "How many seasons will there will there be for the new Animaniacs?" Cool. I'm, well, I'm told that it's it's a two season order. So there's the first season is thirteen half hours, second season thirteen half hours, hmm, and okay. uh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, my childhood's coming back. Love yeah. it. I'm excited. So. Um, Speaking of Animaniacs, when you when you were first making, when you were creating the show, did you ever think that it would be this big, like, on such a, like, like the scale you it's never, at right now? You never know. I mean, I, honestly, uh, when I was making it in 93 and 94 with Sherry Stoner and, and uh, Rich Aarons and Paul Rugg and just the entire crew, we... We knew that we had a good situation there. We had uh, almost complete creative freedom. We had no one second guessing us. We were just going to make shows that we thought were really funny. And we were the final arbiters. So it was a situation that quite honestly doesn't exist today anywhere. Because in, in our little business, everybody's second guessing everybody. And, oh, that's not funny or that's funny. We just, we made them. If someone said, oh, I'm not laughing. I thought, too bad. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we had, uh, we knew that we were pleasing ourselves. We knew that we were making something. And I was taking them home. My kids were enjoying them. And uh, so I knew we were doing something good. And uh, did we think it would last forever? Well, I, I, when we were making it, we knew it was good and we thought, well, we can have a run on this forever. I mean, we can make this show run like, well, Simpsons has run forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, uh, what happened was they started figuring out that they could make money on the reruns. Once you get to about 100 episodes or 65 episodes, you don't need a big batch more to just keep rerunning them and making money. So they realized, oh, making more isn't really cost effective. So that's what they discovered while we were making them and that sort of put a kibosh on letting it go forever. So uh, whether it was going to be made again, uh, like rebooted, uh, you know, I, I, I'm glad it is. I mean, I, I'm glad that the show is a success. I, the show that we made is a success and continues to be beloved. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that the new one is, uh, a big success too. Um, one of the comments, it's not a question, it's more of a comment towards you. Uh, 12 Dale says, on YouTube, 12 Dale says, knowing it shaped my childhood, I hope you are proud, sir. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad. I hope it shaped your your childhood uh, safely and carefully. And <laughs> he I can sing you, all of the I cities hope, of the United States. <laughs> I hope you're not uh, currently in a you know, federal penitentiary. <laughs> if you are in trouble, <laughs> blink twice. Oh, wait, you comment blinking. So I, I'm glad it, I hope it a, it, anywhere it, it made kids laugh. It gave them uh, mm -hmm. uh, a smile during their day. Uh, I really, I'm very happy to have uh, brought some joy. Really happy. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I remember talking to one of my friends a few years ago. She was like, oh, yeah, I used the some of the Animaniacs episodes where Yakko's singing about all the geography and I used that to ace my test. I was like, what kind of test did you get that you could do that? I didn't get that class. Well, the capitals, uh, you know, United States, well, there's that, but- uh, Baton, And the country Louis song. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, and Columbus is the capital of Ohio. A lot of kids yeah. really were saved by that thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was re countries, very helpful. You know, <laughs> Naming all the countries is just more of an endurance test. <laughs> to memorize that one is tough. Well, Rob still did it. I saw him with some of the other 
uh, Ninja Turtle actors uh, back in 2014 at a convention in San Diego. And somebody went and asked him be- because they knew he was in Animaniacs. He- they were like, sing the song. And of course he did. And it was still spot on. And we were just like, it, it, it's truly amazing because some of the other voice actors, some of the ones that work on like anime or, or anything currently on Cartoon yeah. Network or the, anytime they run into an Animaniacs voice actor, like, oh, do you know the song? <laughs> That's impressive. Even yeah, they're was, like, uh... <gasps> they're even they're starstruck. Um, Jesse also, uh, Jesse also sit next to Sherry Stoner. Wait, sit next to Sherry Stoner at uh, a funeral of a colleague that uh, we love, and uh, Sherry leans over to me and says, "And now, Rob Paulson will sing all the cemeteries of the world." <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh shit! Pack a joke at a funeral. I love it. And so I'm sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> you're just like fr- purposely frowning, like because you're trying not to lie. Like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Well, she she is uh, truly one of the funniest people on. on the planet. She and Paul oh, Rock. You see, the beauty uh, of those original shows. I mean, we had these writers, uh, Paul Rugg, John McCann, Sherry Stoner, Deanna Albert, Peter Hastings, Nick Hollander, uh, John McCann. I mean, just the funniest people that I've known. So I honestly spent like three years in a recording booth just laughing because uh, these writers were so good and the performers were so good. So I had, for about three years, I had the best job on earth. I was just, I had a lot of laugh lines added then. Um. Uh, Jess, another comment for you, sir. Jess, it's, Jess it on you on Facebook. The last one was from YouTube. This one's from Facebook. Thank you for making our childhood. And Aww. then he puts blushing faces. Ah, uh, wholesome stuff. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I'm really, I'm, I'm really glad the the show holds up. Uh, so we got some yeah. more comments uh, on because we're streaming right now. We're streaming on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook at the same time. So we get comments from all three channels. Uh, we got a couple from YouTube. One of them was, well, since I was raised with Alex, it must have been okay. Anime 77 says, hello, nurse. And well, Mason okay. says that the people who design. I can't read that one. Minerva Mink. Yeah, Minerva, oh, Minerva Mink. Mink. Oh. And people, Fifi La Fume. <laughs> say, what, what are they saying? What are they asking? Uh, they were asking, uh, did the people who designed them know that they were uh, they were awakening in children? <laughs> 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 Well, say the names again. Uh, Minerva, Minerva Mink and Fifa La, Fifi Lafume. Lafume. Yeah, Fifi's from uh, Tiny Toons. Tiny Toons. And Minerva had a, a, she had a decent run of Animaniacs. She was the very much Marilyn Monroe mm-hmm. uh, character, caricature as a as a, an animal. And I know, yes, uh, both those characters are popular in uh, the world of furries. People who are. <laughs> Who Let's are make these I animals sexy? I know very little about it, but uh, to stay off deviant art, you never have to even go there. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, uh, I have a question though. Um, when it regards to like you know, what Animaniacs or Tiny Toons, uh, in terms of the writing, was there any like scene or line from the shows when you were writing that you thought there is no way the network is going to let us say this? But when it aired, it was like, oh, wow, I can't believe they let us say that or they let us do this. Was there any moments like that during the show? Oh, yeah, the whole uh, Prince line. <gasps> yes, that was yes. So crazy. <laughs> yes, I was actually going to eventually bring that up. Same. I was like, when can I bring up the fingerprints? Who yeah, came well, up with that? What were y'all on? What it is. It's, you know, it was uh, Hercule Yakko was the person. Yes. Who, uh, they were looking for clues in the Hip Hippo's uh, stateroom. Uh, Yakko told Dot to look for prints, and uh, she pulls out of a, 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 the porthole, she pulls the, the singing, the, the artist formerly known as Prince, and uh, he's in her arms. And uh, look, I found Prince. And, and Yakko says, no, 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 fingerprints, fingerprints. And she says, she looks at him, she says, I don't think so. <laughs> but I love that. That wasn't scripted. Really? really? No. And we were recording it. Mm-hmm. Now, fingerprints, fingerprints. And she just throw, she's supposed to throw the guy out the porthole. That was it. it. And that's why the joke happens because Tress McNeil ad-libbed. She's reading the script. She's reading the script. 
And she's literally saying, I don't think so, to the script. Oh. <laughs> because she says, oh my God, what are you guys doing? You know, so we're recording it, you know, no fingerprints, fingerprints. And she's looking at this and she's, she goes in the mic, I don't think so. And <laughs> we kept that. And uh, then it just like, it stayed in the, so that wasn't in the storyboard because the storyboard, they already approved it. So mm -hmm. now it's on the track. And so <laughs> it's written into the sheets and uh, anyhow, it got animated. So it comes <laughs> back and it's there and we're going, oh my God, that's incredible. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. And we left it in and the network just completely missed it. <laughs> wow. what decades later the internet found it and put it everywhere it is definitely one of the most iconic lines in the whole show yeah, uh, yeah I, I went and worked at disney uh, at uh, uh for the 7d the, the the head of the network nancy Cantor, the head of a uh, disney junior came to me and she said you know, you can't do any of those dirty jokes. That you're <laughs> <laughs> so what dirty jokes? Are, well, finger. Yeah. <laughs> the best line, sure. Um, um, we have a question so, for you in the comments well, section. Hold well, wait a second before we go. That was like finishing with the story. No, so, it's... was it actually intended to be a dirty joke, or did just everyone have a uh, gutter minds and just automatically went there? No fingerprints. Finger. She says no. It was not a dirty joke. You see? She okay. Said, yeah. Um, prints. No fingerprints. The, yeah, you yeah, you guys were being innocent, and everyone else just went ahead and made it dirty. The trust said, "I don't think so." <laughs> right. Because it's she's saying, "I don't think you're going to use this in the story or in the script." Hmm. Okay. But in the, in the ultimate cartoon, she is Dot is saying, "I'm not going to actually finger the part right, right. Of known as Prince, which is right. of course disgusting and foul." Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It was, it was in, in that, uh, for SJ, I think that's more of like where improv comes in. Like, no, absolutely. Like yeah. Because well, there's a great line I love from, uh, I think Peter Hastings wrote King Yakko and, and uh, Hello Nurse comes up to her, comes, comes up to him and says, Sire. And King Yakko says, maybe later. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's dirty. Yeah, that's... Uh, a good one. I actually have, I have a question myself, but uh, we want to address the comments real quick. Martin from Facebook has asked, hey. "Do you have baloney in your slacks?" Uh, at this moment, um, no. I, I seriously, I only do that for a very special day. <laughs> oh, we're not special day. <laughs> I mean, we're special Ed. <laughs> well, no, but I, yeah, baloney. I mean. That's, there's a great line, huh? Yeah, I, mean, I was very proud of that. You know, for Animaniacs, we had baloney in our slack. Uh, I remember going through. I had like 50, 60 lines of you know that rhyme, mm -hmm. and I had I went through uh, a bunch of them with my little kids. They were what were they nine, uh, nine seven, and five. And I said, "What well, do you like this line? You like this line? You like baloney in my slack? Oh yeah, they like that." <laughs> uh, Bill Clinton plays the sax. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. I mean, my little kids like Bill Clinton plays the sax. There you I go. I heard, your control group. So here's the thing. So growing up, like a focus group. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't. I didn't. I, I. I guess that's. I guess most children didn't understand them. But like, growing up as being dyslexic, growing up, I missed a whole lot of the, like, inside jokes. But as an adult, like, when when I finally understood them as a joke, I always wonder. Did y'all add a lot of these jokes? Like the the fingerprints one, we understand now that was like improv. But the rest of them, it's like, hey, let's see what we can get away with. Let's push the envelope. Let's add some adult humor to it to kind of. No, I don't think we ever did that, and I, I don't think the show really is uh, packed with adult humor. Um, it, it, there's some there's some innuendo and some uh, double meanings now and then. Mm -hmm. but I'd say it's 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 fairly sparse. Uh, okay. We were, we, uh, as writers and artists and directors and, I mean, we were pretty silly people and, and uh, we, we all, we like to make each other laugh. And so if we could get that in a script, we would do it. Um, you know, I wrote like a critical condition with Slappy Squirrel, where she goes up against the, uh, 
the two critics who are criticizing her movies, uh, Siskel and Ebert. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I always felt like it was important to go as far as you could with a joke. And so I had them, pump, I had at the popcorn stand in that cartoon, I had Slappy Squirrel pumping uh, lard, liposuctioning lard out of uh, the, the chubby uh, film critic's stomach into the popcorn as butter. And I, I think, how did that happen? How did they allow <laughs> that? And, uh, but the, the thing is, I, I, sh I wrote it in the script and all the other people, they're laughing and say, oh yeah, we have to keep that, that's so funny. Um, <laughs> so, and all the artists and directors, everybody was trying to add the funny to it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I don't think we're ever trying to like, be uh, sexual. I don't think that was a goal. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Uh, it was just, it was one of those things because I didn't see a lot of adult humor and I just thought that I was, because I'm dyslexic, sometimes I have to watch things twice to kind of understand it. And well, I just didn't see things, a lot of it. There are probably things in it that uh, that an adult would, would recall would be like, for instance, the clown, the clown that torments the yak, wacko in the tower, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and he sings a song. Well, when a whipper will, whippers in the wind, the wind will whip it back. A oh, nice and chubby baby. And now we thought that was the funniest thing that ever happened. Now, little kids are not going to, uh, why is he singing that stupid song? <laughs> but, but Jerry Lewis, the adults that know Jerry Lewis know that he sings these sentimental stupid songs and so uh there's an example of where the adult in the audience probably enjoys it more than the kid right yeah i think uh <laughs> there was a ref i think there was a line i remember is the thanksgiving the pilgrim asks the warners give me the bird and then yakko goes we like to really but the fox censors won't allow it and then as a kid i'm like huh and then now i'm like oh <laughs> bird. yeah yeah i like that one too <laughs> we have a we have a couple of uh, comments for you. Uh, one of them is from Zarek on Facebook saying, "You sir are one of the greatest heroes. Your mind helped establish one of the greatest golden animation eras of our time. Yeah. I wish you great success and health in the future years to arrive." Well, uh -huh. thank you, Zarek, and I, I hope you have a, a beautiful and successful and great future too. I really, so, I, I really appreciate the, the 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 nice comments, and I really do. Uh, funny story. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I was telling two of my friends last night. I talked to them over the phone. One of them is named Asian Alex, and the other one is Zarek. And they don't they don't give a crap about the podcast. They never watch the podcast. Like Zarek will tune in every now and then, but Asian doesn't give a shit about the podcast. And then I told him, dude, Tom Ruger is going to be on the show. He created Animaniacs. And he starts like, what? Are you for real? Because he will... We go to conventions, and whenever he's chilling in the room, he will sit there and watch... Tiny Toons and Animaniacs and a bunch of old Hanna-Barbera cartoons and Looney Tunes and Scooby-Doo and Ghostbusters. He's like, he's really into old cartoons and he's kind of the person that got me back in Animaniacs. And so he's going nuts over the phone. Are you for real? How did you, like, well, he's asking me like these 20 questions. And like, so he asked me, you better ask him, like, who's his favorite character on Animaniacs? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I <laughs> wish I could give you, what's your friend's name? Uh, the one that asked, that question in his name is Alex, but we call him Asian Alex. Asian Alex. Well, you know, I'd love to, I, I think of myself as the brain sometimes. <laughs> I will say that, like, you know, because I literally, someone asked me once, you know, where did you come up with uh, this thing where a mouse wants to take over the world? And I said, wait, who doesn't want to take over the world? Right. Right. So, um, but anyway, but he, but the, the brain, uh, sorry to veer off on, favorite characters but no, it's okay. the brain has uh he has issues you know he has a whole rack of issues so uh i think it's easier to love the warners than than uh to love the brain yeah it's easier i like the goofy security guard i feel like he doesn't get enough credit Ralph, Ralph, <laughs> Ralph, Ralph, yeah. 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 he first appeared in a scooby episode years and years ago i mean the voice that frank welker did for ralph mm -hmm. the first yeah, yeah, yeah. Scooby. 
I thought uh, when you said that, I thought was, I was automatically thinking the character. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> podcast was over. Like, I gotta go look for that. Yeah. Playing was a security guard back in the Scooby too, but it was just not didn't look exactly the same. Oh yeah, that makes it. Uh, there's a lot. Frank Welker is a is one of the voice actors returning, and he of course did oh. uh, Ralph the guard, and he did Plots, uh, the the studio boss. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and many others. He did uh, buttons. He did he did uh, uh, re- runt. Mm-hmm. And but he's not. But he. I guess plots isn't coming back. I, I understand. Aww. I don't know why. But they, they replaced him with a uh, new CEO. Mm. <laughs> uh, um, we have a couple of questions on here. We're man. There are so many comments today. <laughs> uh, so one of them is to <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna address Jessid from Facebook saying, "I love how they also talked about the Fox Network." Will they be talking about other networks in the show? Well, yeah, I saw the the previews. I don't know if you've seen these little uh, uh, trailers, and they're mm-hmm. definitely uh, they're going to rail on Hulu. You know they are. Yeah, they they already <laughs> they already like they were talking about reboots. Oh, reboots are when people have no longer have creative ideas, and then the guy from Hulu is <laughs> like, "Here's your check, you sellouts." <laughs> <laughs> A big like pile of Hulu money comes down, and yes. they're wearing Hulu shirts and hats. Yeah, and all. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. I, that was great. Um, another one. This is a this is kind of a serious one. Uh, Twelve Dale on YouTube says, "How do you feel about the recent attack on comics that are saying some subjects are just off limits?" Well, I, you'd have to give me the specific subjects. I know that uh, I don't think they're bringing back Hello Nurse because I think there was a certain um, maybe perhaps not very woke. Uh, thinking behind uh, Hello Nurse. And 93 was a different time, uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, Yakko and Wacko would go wacky over uh, a pretty girl. But at the same time, we allowed, you know, Dot to go wacky over a, a handsome guy. So it wasn't yeah. like we were being too one sided. But uh, I think they're, I mean, I don't think they're bringing back Minerva Mink. That may be for a different reason. Um, I'm sure there are going to be things that uh, are dropped from the series because of uh, sensitivity to uh, modern times. Uh, but I, I don't know what they are. I don't know what their rules are there. Right. Well, that I think that's what they were trying to go for. Like, is there, is there any, like, and you kind of just mentioned it, like, are there any major changes due to the way society is the way it is now you know versus the 90s uh yeah i again i'm not involved in the reboot okay. so the reboot uh I, I i understand it has yakko wacko and dot and picking the brain so it doesn't have the 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 rest of the cast of characters i think they have some new incidental characters i personally my feeling is animaniacs is a an umbrella title for that entire cast of characters uh, in other words, Yakko, Wacko, Dot, Pinky, and the Brain are members of the Animaniacs cast, but they per se are not specifically the Animaniacs. The whole group is. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. You know, that's that's my thinking on it. Okay, so that that's a good point. I, I like how you just mentioned that. Like, when you think Animaniacs, you think of Yakko, Wacko, and Dot, but you think that they are just the Animaniacs, not as a part of a larger group. Well, they're the Warner Brothers oh, the and Dot. And Warner yeah, but like <laughs> yeah, that kind of slipped say. because it's been so long. Right. You kind of forget like, oh, they're the Warner Brothers and the Warner sister. Right. Yeah. Now, we had to go to the Warner Brothers family, by the way, to and get their sign off to name Yakko, Wacko, and Dot Warners. Mm. Oh, wow. Because we were, you know, we had the big tower and Warner Brothers symbol and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who came, like, okay, so... Why the water tower? Well, I'll tell you. So I pitched the new series. Sherry Stoner, Gene McCurdy, uh, Alfred Gimeno, and I went to Steven Spielberg's house. Mm -hmm. Uh, One Saturday morning, we had milk and cookies, and we pitched them the entire Animaniac (laughs) show. And uh, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot, and and Pinky and the Brain, and Slappy Squirrel, and uh, Rita and Runt uh, all made the cut couple characters didn't uh a couple raccoon characters that called uh nipsey and russell they didn't make it uh-huh. mm. mindy and buttons didn't make it right 
so uh, at that point, uh, at, we're wrapping it up and Steven Spielberg's uh, wife and entire entourage family uh, of kids comes barreling in the room, uh, <laughs> arriving home. And one of the little kids goes up to, we have these cutouts of all the characters and they're still standing. And one of them goes up to Mindy and this, this kid had to be like two, just a toddler. And he said, I like her, he said. <laughs> And uh, we look at Steven, he says, Mindy and Buttons are back in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how they made it in. Um, so uh, let's see. I, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here. What were we talking about? Warner Brothers Tower. The Water Tower. Warner Brothers Tower. So Steven said prior to this uh, meeting, he said, I'm not going to uh, okay a series uh, mm -hmm. that doesn't have a marquee name. Uh, in other words, Tiny Tunes. Well, I, I, I want to build on the success with a new series, Tom, but you, you, you got to give me a marquee name. I said, you're giving us the marquee name, Steven. He says, Steven Spielberg presents uh, Animaniac. He says, no, 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 no. That, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the, the show itself needs to have a marquee name in it. And uh, he says, so he was pushing for the Plucky Duck show. Hmm. He, he thought that would be good. But we were all... You know, we had made 60, 70, 80 episodes of, of Tiny Tunes, and we thought, well, let's, uh, we don't want, we want to do this new show. So a couple of days later, I'm walking across the lot, and uh, I, this is really bugging me because I need a marquee name. So I, I see the water tower with the big WB shield on it, and I had uh, definitely what you would call a cartoon epiphany. Uh, <laughs> The light bulb went off and everything. It did, it did. And <laughs> so I, I went to Steve and I said, uh, I've got your marquee name. Uh, Yakko Wackwin Dot are Yakko Wackwin Dot Warner. They are the Warner Brothers and their sister Dot. The marquee is the water tower with the big WB on it. And they live inside that water tower. And they've been locked up there since 1940 like, because uh, they were too insane. And anyway, the whole thing came together and, and he bought it. He said, uh, I thought I'd stumped you with that marquee thing, but, <laughs> but you came up with it. Uh, what was it like uh, working with Steven Spielberg? Like you're, you're talking about a guy that, that made, you know, Jura I don't know if Jurassic Park was <laughs> out already. It was before uh, that. It was, it yeah. was, ju it just came Jurassic out. Jurassic Park yeah. was out before. And then you, you know, you got ET and, and Jaws. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, Jaws. Man, Shut you guys. Let's see. I'm trying to find a new background. Huh. I, I was wondering, too. I you're, like, messing with me over here. I, I looked I at your like background, like and I'm like... I used to change my background all the time. I'm like, I'm like I saw your background change. I'm like, I'm not even drinking in this podcast. And I swear his background changed. All right, so, um, working with Steven, uh, Tiny Tunes, he was very, very involved. He uh, didn't have a lot... A lot of movie stuff going on. So he was reading scripts, looking at the storyboards, and giving notes. Um, I remember being uh, uh, in Laguna Beach. It was 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning, and my phone rings, and I didn't know anybody knew I was even there. <laughs> and it was Steven Spielberg on the phone. He's like, how did he find me? Oh, my God. He's got agents. And uh, he's in Long Island, so it's three hours ahead. So it's 10 a.m., not 7 a.m., he starts giving me notes on a storyboard that I don't have in front of me. I'm like, oh, go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, tell me the notes. Yeah. And I'm writing these notes on uh, the brown paper bag of a Ralph's, uh, Ralph's uh, grocery store bag, front and back. And so he's giving me these notes. So he was very involved in Tiny Toons. Uh, he wanted more shadows on the characters. So he liked, uh, he liked Acom's animation more than the studios that weren't giving the shadows. Which and eight times animation wasn't that great, but they put shadows on the characters. So, uh, but he definitely um, was involved in uh, just all the storyboards, all the writing, and uh, not all the writing. I mean, he didn't write a thing, but he read a lot of stuff. Mm. I by, a... the time, by the time Animaniacs came around, though, he was busy with other movies, and he 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 had total faith in us at that point. I think at the beginning of Tiny Toons, he was like, are these guys any good? So now that he knew we were good, he kind of just let us go. 
Mm. Which um, address some comments. Gabby says hi. Stormy says hi. Uh, they said talk about the new launch place. There's a trailer for if you want to sneak peek. There is a trailer out. Oh, I've seen want... it. Oh <laughs> no, they, they want it. They want a sneak peek. I'm like, there's a trailer out. They can just go watch the trailer. Go look. Uh, I saw something today that's like more of a commercial than a trailer with even new footage in it. So I, I've seen something uh, with that had the Jurassic Park bit. Mm -hmm. Then they put a trailer out earlier this week. And since the trailer came out, now there's like a commercial out that has uh, additional footage in it. I saw. Yeah, the, I think the, the first trailer, not the Jurassic Park parody, but the first trailer dropped the same day as the new Fast and the Furious trailer. And oh. so we were just, I was just like, ugh, another Fast and the Furious. <laughs> so well, my, meanwhile, the rest of us, we were hyped for the new Animaniacs. No, I was hyped for the new Animaniacs, but I'm just sick of Fast and the Furious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just good. make a, just wait for Animaniacs to make a parody of Fast and the Furious. I was I'll, I'll make it all better. I, I, I like that. If, if anybody from, from Warner, Brothers. Warner Brothers is listening, parody it. Well, we know Fox is listening. They keep cutting off his camera. <laughs> we don't anime Matsuri is listening they keep cutting yeah. off my internet <laughs> um, and I actually had a question for you okay I want to uh, is it true that I don't know about Animaniacs but for Tiny Toons that some of the anima some of the animation for some of the episodes was actually done from anime studios overseas uh, you know what I, I'm yeah, I, it's well. TMS did a lot of stuff on both shows, and they're not necessarily anime, but you know, they're, to they're uh, Yeah, movies. they're based in Japan, from what I from yeah. From I mean, what they're, I read. they're Japanese animators. They know what they're doing. They did uh, a lot of Tiny Toons and a lot of Animaniacs. Um, and we had uh, Acom. We had a company in the Philippines. We had uh, a company in New Zealand. We had a group in Chicago, Star Tunes. Um, and we had uh, Cuckoo's Nest in uh, Taipei. So each studio had strengths and, and tended to uh, draw the characters in their own sort of slightly different style. Um, uh, people seem to think TMS's animation is best. I, I would say that uh, Ch the Chicago Star Tunes crew, uh, I think did better character animation, more lovable. Um, and also uh, Taipei, where Dave Marshall was uh, in charge, made uh, Cuckoo's Nest. They made uh, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot absolutely adorable, as did John McClenahan uh, with Star Tunes in Chicago. Um, but as for anime, um, I mean, I guess you're talking about TMS. Right, yeah, because there was somebody talking about, like, a lot of cartoon studio, like, a lot of the, like, for instance, when you make cartoons or anything, sometimes you have not like the the studios that do anime in Japan make the some of the episodes for the cartoons here in the U.S. Right. Well, I'll tell you, my kid Cody, uh, when he was five or six, he was we were watching. Uh, he loved um, this. What are the figurines that you have that you showed me before? You know, it's, uh, Dragon Ball. Dragon, Dragon Ball. Ball Z. He was a big Dragon Ball Z fan. And uh, so I, I'd, ha I'd bring home an Animaniacs episode to show him. And he said, Dad, why can't you animate it like Dragon Ball Z? They, you know, said, what? We have, our animation's better than... No, it's not. <laughs> Look, when you get close to their eyes, they're sparkling in, 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 in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I said, well, we could do that, Cody, because there's only two drawings involved in that. She said, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, this is a very controversial opinion, but the U.S., even if it's animated overseas, U.S. animation tends to be nine times out of ten better because it's very consistent to where with Dragon Ball Z, one episode, the anim the animation is good. And then the next episode, it looks like they ran out of money. Yeah, it's like uh -huh. one frame looks better than the other frame. <laughs> wow. I didn't know that. I always thought Dragon Ball Z had a consistent look. Not true, huh? Mm -mm. No, because well, with anime, they have lower budgets. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do you guys like? Uh, oh, I'll come back to it. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm actually. Oh, I wanna, no, uh, I, you got me interested now. Go on. I'm blanking on the name. No, I really am. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. 
<laughs> to me, like, Animaniacs is very, it's very iconic. Mm -hmm. It is part of mainstream pop culture. And I feel like, would you have, like, we talked about, like, did you think it was ever going to be popular? Did you, like, most of the people that are looking forward to it now are adults. The, how does that make you feel? Like, you know, this was a this was a cartoon centered towards children, but these children never stopped being fans, and they grew up to be parents. And, and now, now they they're have looking kids. forward to it. Now. <laughs> and now their kids are. I watching. do think that this show it's targeted for uh, those people who uh, can uh, pay for Hulu. <laughs> and, <laughs> honestly, that's the out. reason. I, that's that all. The re honestly, that's probably the reason I will get a Hulu just for, just to right, we'll share your account with me because I'm poor. They can pay for <laughs> and they can and and this is nostalgia for them. This is like golden nostalgia, and they really enjoy the show. Now, I think the show's made for them. I'm mm -hmm. guessing. I'm guessing that it, it's really there to appeal to them, but they'll bring their kids in and say, hey, watch this. I used to like this. Do you like this? And if the kids see mom and dad laughing, they'll like it. So I, it's a pretty good uh, formula, I think. It's a pretty good equation they've come up with. Mm -hmm. I think, like, you go back. You go back to the 90s. You look at video games. You look at cartoons. Anime is almost non-existent in this country right around this time. And you think these are things... They're made for children, and you feel like some people, like, you know, adults back then, are like, okay, these are always going to be for children. But you look at cartoons now. You look at video games. You look at all this stuff that was made for children, and now it's very adult-centric. Like, there are a lot of adults that watch cartoons, and, like, there's these cartoons, like, you... Because Animaniacs is being put on the same level as other cartoons. I don't know if you've heard of them, but, like, Gravity Falls and oh, yeah. Avatar... Oh, no, I, I've been living in a hole. I've been <laughs> You'd be surprised at how many people have not heard of Gravity Falls. Like, I'm pretty sure a lot of people, like my parents, they don't they don't know what Avatar or Gravity Falls is. No, I I, I know those. I know those. Airbender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like these are these are not the same cartoons we grew up with. Like these are like Batman the Animated Series. You know, Animaniacs, Tiny. Well, here, here's the thing: when we made Batman and when we made Animaniacs. There was no, there weren't these niche channels. There wasn't, you know, Nickelodeon for tiny kids. And there wasn't, you know, Cartoon Network, Boomerang. I mean, it was still, uh, there weren't, we didn't have cell phones. It was a different world. Mm -hmm. And and the cartoons we were making were for a general audience. Now, the, the advertising was aimed at children, but it was for everybody in the family. These were family, made for the family. Now, mm -hmm. Not that many cartoons nowadays are made for the general audience. They're very niche. They're very specific. Um, you know, uh, Disney has all, you know, 50 shows that are just for kids under four. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, so they're, you know, they're shows specifically made for girls four to seven and boys eight to 11. Our shows were made for all those people. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, I think today, uh, I, I think it's somewhat amazing that Animaniacs is being made uh, because they're not normally making cartoons for the general audience anymore. They're making them very specific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, one second. I need one second. Okay, no, go ahead. With that being said, today's he podcast. <laughs> he, at least doing? it wasn't into the forest again. I, I'm not going to freak out. Yeah, now he just disappeared into like to the, the crowd. A, a group of cartoon. <laughs> no, look at his friends in the background. They all look so happy. An they got jobs they again. That way. <laughs> Throw that pigeon in the bottom. Yeah, you can't. They can't diss on Squint. Throw Pesci pigeon. There's, there's, there's Pink in the brain. I was like, he's blocking him. It was the show that I loved that I was blanking. Cowboy Bebop. I love. <laughs> oh wow, that one is a really popular one. Classic yeah. anime. That's one of Classic. the most beautiful shows, and and so freaking. Uh, dramatically profound and deep mm -hmm. and moving and i mean it's a great cartoon uh show it is it, it's a great <laughs> cartoon you can you can call it 
I mean, you'll piss off a bunch of nerds, but who cares? <laughs> Not a cartoon. Do we need to bring up the joke that they'll spend two hundred dollars on a figurine, but they'll they'll like ugh, Can't four dollar soap? Them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. It's like Dracula with a cross. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's a comment just now, like breaking the fourth wall every time you walk backwards. You literally. literally, you literally <laughs> no, just it was like we were there. joking earlier when you would walk to the back and it was the fourth. Oh my God, there it goes into the woods. Yeah, and then bad, bad, he bad, walks bad. into the woods and out of nowhere comes Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. Very good. Uh, <laughs> is he making anything anymore? Uh, yeah, he still can. He made a did, movie. Yeah, he just did that. The movie Anybody? about himself. I think though. Transformers yeah. killed his career. Stop it. Five to nothing. People. Yes. Oh, wow. Look out here on the Zoom. He's actually been posting the score, the score. Oh, thank you, Jake. <laughs> I, I didn't want to mention it. I, mean, like, I little... never saw I it. I couldn't just... see it because the bell. I, 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 I noticed it. I'm like, first I thought he was like posting his phone number. Like, what the hell? Five, five, five. <laughs> I thought it said Sola. <laughs> a couple items here. All right. All okay. right. All right. Okay. Well, today's podcast is brought to you by Goku Burger. Mmm. I can change the color on this. I'll change the color. Yeah, yeah, change the color yeah just a little bit because it's, it's changed like blue. It's because my background is white. So. Yeah, make yeah. it blue. I'll put it. I'll change it. <laughs> uh, Alex says, Dodger please, please, please get a life foundation. How do Ooh. I change the color oh. on this? Oh, look at that. Wow. That's cool. Oh, okay. It, it keeps going in with the background, but oh my God. Oh, the brain thing. statue. Thing's big. Asian Alex is watching hey, right now. I hope hey. you're seeing this. It's a the brain statue. That's really it's cool. Large. That is really cool. Yes, always. Ooh, I can change the color. Anyway. <laughs> so I think I think we've exhausted your audience, haven't we? No, uh, I think we I mean, a... if you would like to go, we're not going to stop you. No, if, if you if you have to go, we can actually go. Well, we've got a few more minutes. So we have okay. more, any more questions? Uh, uh, actually, uh, I actually do have one. Um, whenever the when you have to design the characters like for anime and after Tiny Tunes, uh when was there were you involved in like the for the voiceovers for the characters um like did you like have any inputs like hey you know this guy he fits that voice for this character oh sure yeah we uh in in both series we uh i was there for the uh the casting sessions uh andrea romano and uh leslie lammers would basically send out the call to every voice artist in town and we did hundreds of auditions for both series. They would usually send in uh, tapes of themselves reading the copy mm -hmm. in different voices. Um, for instance, Freakazoid, when we sent out the copy for Freakazoid, everybody sent in tapes that were just like, nah, I'm Freakazoid, I'm crazy. <laughs> you know, that's all we got. We got like a million of those and we wanted to kill ourselves. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> We got to pick the one that's good. But then we bring them in, and we and they and they, they we bring in the best in town. All right, Freakazoid. He's a crazy superhero. He has all the information from the internet in his brain, and he's you know he's doing jokes as he's capturing the villains. And um, they said, "Oh, okay." And so doing that, oh, I'm crazy. And they would do the same thing. So uh, Rug. Finally, we got Paul Rugg, the uh, guy who was writing it. We said, Paul, and he's a great improv guy, why don't you just give us a little taste? And so he went more serious with him. He's sort of like normal. And then he would do, ah! he would do something nutty. And then he would go into his serious Jerry Lewis thing where, oh, that's really beautiful. I love that you do that kind of crazy thing that you do. Uh, so he was sort of like schizophrenic, but not all, not every one of his personalities was like that. So, uh, but for Animaniacs and for Tiny Toons, you know, we had definite things in mind. We, for, for Tiny Toons, we we're trying to emulate somewhat, uh, capture a little bit of the essence of the original Looney Tune characters, except for Babs, who was brand new, and that we just knew Tress McNeil was going to be right for that. And then with, with uh, the, the Warner Brothers and Pinky the Brain and Slappy, uh, we knew we wanted to do sort of a Groucho thing, and we got Rob Paulson to do a bunch of versions of that. Uh, uh, we knew we wanted Tress again, and uh, for Wacko, mm -hmm. we, we again, it's the same thing. We did, we had everybody in town, and they, oh, Wacko, ah! everyone came in and did that. And so, 
the final day of auditions for Wacko, I brought in, uh, remember the, the Almanac would be a 1967 Almanac or 19, you know, 2010 Almanac. It was a big chubby book. And back then in 93, they printed, you know, well-known celebrities, just like page after page of well-known celebrities and would give their birth date. And so I'm going down that and we have people in the booth trying to record something for Wacko. So Jess Harnell, we didn't know him at all. He comes in. So we're going, you know, Avin Costello, you do Lou Costello, you know. So I get to the Beatles. I say, do you do the Beatles? And he does all four Beatles back to back perfectly. It's like, well, that's pretty interesting because he's doing it with Wacko's copy. Hello, I'm Wacko, you know, <laughs> how are you doing? And, and uh, so he does all four and we pick out uh, uh, Ringo. We say, that's the one. <laughs> and we stuff. send, we, uh, so we put that in and everyone else is going, ah! and then, hello, I'm Wacko, you know. Uh, so we sent, and we sent the Yakos, we sent like 10 Yakos, 10 Wackos, 10 Dots. But the Yakos we sent, we sent, and we numbered them, one, two, three. we didn't tell the, the you don't want to influence people with saying, oh, it's a famous person doing it. Right. So uh, we numbered them and one, one, six, and eight were Rob Paulson for, for Yakko because we knew we wanted him. So we put his three <laughs> best auditions in there. And so he he made the cut. Uh, well, you know who made the cut. <laughs> as for the brain, as for the brain, uh, Maurice came in, and we had Tom Minton and, and Eddie Fitzgerald in mind for those two roles. I mean, it was just like Tom um, Minton would talk like this and very whisper, and Eddie Fitzgerald. Ugh. So uh, Maurice comes in and tries out for the brain, and as he's auditioning, as he's getting ready, he always does like a little voice exercise for himself. <clears throat> you know, and that's right. Uh, Mrs. Uh, you know, peas grow there. And uh, what do you mean? And, and he does this Orson Welles bit mm -hmm. to warm up. And we said, just keep doing that voice for the brain's copy. And that's how that happened. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> we do have a we do have a couple of questions for you in the comment section. Michael from Facebook says, so, favorite adult <laughs> beverage? He, he, it was a pause. Favorite adult beverage. That's a good question. <laughs> the second oh. one is from David, who also says, is there any show you wish you had made? Let me answer your question first before you ask the next one. Well, the answer is lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> wish I had burned it and then uh. make something good. Um, Oh, a show that exists. So the adult beverage, um, uh, adult beverage, I, I drink a lot of A&W diet root beer. I'll say that. It's not an adult beverage. It's got beer um, in the name. But it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> and I, I do like a flat tire beer. And I I, uh, I like wild turkey. Uh, but I don't I don't drink much at all. Maybe once a week I'll have a little something. That's about it. Um, oh, what show that exists? I mean, I would have loved to have been involved in Seinfeld. <laughs> there are certain shows that I just love, like Seinfeld. Uh, mm -hmm. Animated series. Um, I, I don't feel bad about not being involved, not being involved in almost all animated series. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the ones I was involved in. Uh, and yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, you are... You're an integral part of a lot of iconic shows, and yep. people would call them cartoons, but I like to call them shows because they are—they tell stories, or they're just that good. I mean, just like Animaniacs. Look at it; it's got a reboot on Hulu. <laughs> Is that good? Is Hulu good? You Is gotta Hulu pay for Hulu. Hulu. Hulu's not free. I mean, <laughs> it's decent. I'll Hulu. bet. I'll bet the show goes to HBO Max uh, before long. I'll watch yeah. it on HBO Max, but Hulu, you pay for it, and you still get commercials. Do I? In other words, can I get Hulu for Where? free with commercials? I think, I you, think can. you can. Yeah, I think the Hulu free has version three is tiers. with commercials. No, they have oh, the yeah, yeah. first tier. It's got shit ton of commercials. The first paid tier has limited commercials. Oh. Okay. And then like the fourteen, fifteen dollar tier, for like it's four TVs much. on at once with the account, no yeah. commercials, but it's a ton of money. Well, I'm gonna sign up for the shit ton of commercials. <laughs> free one. <laughs> so, there you go. Free, I think. Will I be able to see this thing? 
Uh, probably. I think I they might put it behind a paywall. Yeah, they might. They might. So yeah, it really is. Yeah, prepare for that. There seems to be some excitement for uh, some of the viewers. So I think they can make a buck if they keep it behind the paywall. Have it right. on HBO Max because HBO is like commercials. What are those? Now, have, you also, seen, have you seen the Looney Tune cartoon? The new uh, yes on, on HBO Max. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I've had. And, and uh, give me your uh, capsule review. Um, I, they I like how they make it like they try to bring the style of the classic cartoons with a modern twist, mm -hmm. and it's really it's really interesting. They like it in a way. It's like as if you're watching like the classic cartoons. But you do know it's like, it's like a modern twist, which is so cool. It's like I, I enjoy it. I definitely would recommend sure. it. I sure. was a, I was expecting Animaniacs to be on HBO Max because you know HBO um, Max is part of Warner Media, you know Warner right. Brothers and all that. I was okay. expecting. I was like, oh Hulu, ah, would have been cool. If it was there, on HBO Max. <laughs> there are some people complaining that they have like Elmer Fudd no longer has guns. Yeah. yeah, they kind of toned right. it down a bit, but he's actually he, it could it it could still be entertaining. Like there was one where it's like. Uh, he's like a detective and he's like giving bugs a lie detector test or something like that. It was actually pretty entertaining. <laughs> sure. um, oh, Amblin's involved in the in the, um, the the new Animaniac, so that might have something to do with this Hulu thing. Amblin mm -hmm. might okay. have a deal, and uh, okay, that precludes just an exclusive HBO thing. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, comment section to the rescue, by the way. They have come forth <laughs> with the Hulu. So it's five ninety nine with ads, and it's two. That's with, that means two TVs can be on at the same time watching the same account. The thirteen ninety nine with no commercials, and it allows up to four devices to be streaming simultaneously. And mm -hmm. I think there's a free one, but it's got a lot of paywall content. Can you know. get like the free trial thing where you get oh, like yeah. the I'm one, sure you can. one day, yeah. then binge watch it, and then. Uh, according don't. to the uh, trailer, all 13 episodes will be released on the same day. So just go with the free I, trial. It's kind of like the boys. I would, <laughs> I would tell them that. not to do that. I think oh. <laughs> but you see, the advertising, you know, when they're putting money into advertising, they put them all out. We're advertising, yeah, come watch it. And there they are. They don't want to have to advertise a month from now for episode five. Oh, it'll cost them more. But it, we're going to see a real uh, distance between the best of these and the worst of these on that first day. In mm -hmm. other words, episode one's going to look great, and episode 12 might be funky. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I will say that uh, Hulu has gone down in price since mm -hmm. it was uh, since the Disney acquisition of all 20th Century Fox and Hulu. Mm -hmm. and, and they oh, also Hulu has, has plummeted in price. No, they just lowered the price. Right. Yeah. They just also, they, they, it was much more expensive. I think it was like eight dollars or nine dollars for the one with ads. Yeah, Disney's still five bucks, right? Yes. Yes. And uh they also and sometimes Hulu would have that Black Friday special, it's like thirteen bucks for the whole year. Yeah. Oh, I should keep an eye out for that. I'm gonna keep an eye out for that too. <laughs> well yeah, yeah, email me when you see that guys, would you? I will. Uh, I will. Get on it, SJ. Gotcha. We got you. We will take care Super of it. Super has my email. We got right. oh, do you have my email? No, I have you on Facebook. Email, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll stay in contact. We just uh, yeah. any uh, anything, any uh, comments, anything you guys would like to say before we go ahead and uh, wrap it up. Let's let's meet. Let's have another thing after the show's on. We'll talk about the show. What do you think? Yes. 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 Yeah. Actually, like a review. Uh, yes, because. That'll be really close because we have we have a season finale. We're gonna take a oh. we're gonna take a holiday break. Cause I don't yeah. like I don't I don't I don't like to do anything during the holidays. I like everyone to, yeah. to go with their well, yeah the season the season this thing's gonna ha hit November twentieth, so that might be too late. But no no, no our, our 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 season finale is not until December. All right, so we're good. We're good. Well, this has been fun. I thank you all for letting me come uh, visit with you. Oh, no, thank you for this being is great. Here. No, thank this you so much. Such a blessing. <laughs> yeah. Such a blessing. Sorry. Yeah, and sorry about all the confusion. I'm changing. They're making me change schedules. So I was like, uh. We, we thought sorry. she uh, guilt tripped you into like coming into the show. I right, see. I'm not watching the game. And what's the score? Five, Five one. one. Come back. You better go watch. I better go watch. All right. I'm going to sign off. <laughs>
So uh, is there an end? Do we end the show? Uh, you can go ahead and sign off. Uh, yeah, thank you very on. much for uh, joining us. He fades into there. Now you have to drop him from the call. He just he didn't actually he just hang. He just, up. he just left. Go, go, you can like drop him from the call. I think. How? He's gonna close off. He just walks away. All right. Well, if he asks why we charge. kicked him off, I think I could be. Because you were yeah. watching the game. <laughs> This is hilarious. But oh, we you heard probably, it here. I don't He's know if it allows me to kick him off. Hold on, hold on. I got a better idea. I got a better Tom. idea. I can click to remove Tom. Okay. No, but that's just so mean. This... Like, he walked away. Fine, screw it. He okay. literally, Go I ahead. think, went to another room. <laughs> Take care of it. If he complains, SJ did it. Take Yes. Hey. <laughs> it's all I mean, SJ's you can, fault. You can message him. We can't message him. Yeah. I think he literally like, left so the far. room, though, because he doesn't have the TV on his room. Where, maybe I don't know what it looks like. I don't it looks know like what a he green did. screen to me. I don't know what he did. So once right. again, let's just uh, let's just get it out of the way. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping up, guys. Thank you everybody so much for joining us today. Definitely, we had a lot of people on Twitch and YouTube join us. That was really awesome. Thank you so much. This was a great podcast. It's the first Friday podcast in a long time where I've been sober. Yeah. We were all nervous. I'm not gonna lie to you. We were all like, That's "Oh, yeah, we we shit our pants." I'm too sober to be nervous. So. Well, you were yeah. you were shitting your pants. You're like, "Oh shit, how's my no, hair I had, look?" Oh, I wait, had I'm to bald. go to the bathroom. That was different. You're like, oh, <laughs> "How's my hair look?" Oh wait, I'm bald. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous because I was like, "Is this link even gonna work? Where's my food?" We've had that issue. I just before. woke up. <laughs> that would really suck wanna... if the Dodgers wound up losing and then he never comes back. Up. Shout out to oh, Zara, Asian Alex, Anime Seventy Seven, David. Uh, Michael Bailey, uh, we already said Asian. Just everybody. Just Twelve Dale, everybody. Gabby, Stormy. I was gonna say, where are my girls? Twelve Dale. I don't know. You need to talk to them. That's that yeah, Pachinko. Yeah, Pachinko. Pachinko's left. one of the girls. Pachinko, <laughs> Pachinko, left. <laughs> Pachinko left. Get them. Pachinko left you high and dry. If this he showed up and left. Uh, we don't know though. He could. Uh, honeymoon's be over. Lurking in the background. <laughs> Pachinko, you're grounded. <laughs> Back to the basement. With no him. snoo snoo for you. <laughs> thank you everybody so much Ooh, ross is for the shout out to ross who is the leader and creator of box of props mario a cosplay hey. group in texas they are here they need to be guests in the show anyways thank you everybody for joining <laughs> us for the we had this was tom ruger the creator of animaniacs one of the creators for tiny tune adventures one of the writers and producers for freakazoid and, and a, a creative for... consultant for Lunatics Unleashed. Yep. <laughs> he was a creative consultant, even though he that's all. He, like, he had the, the idea, they stole it and revamped it. No, they stole yep. the name. They didn't take anything else. No, they, they changed the name too. It was Lunatics Mix Nuts. Was or so. Lunatics Unleashed. But he, no, had he didn't come up with the Unleashed part. Nuts and stuff. No, yeah. It was Mix Nuts. Jeez. You're saying the same thing, just at different times. <laughs> <laughs> I like that joke. That's a good joke. It was great. That was good. Oh, man. This was a great podcast. So for those of you watching on YouTube, please, please, please hit the thumbs up button for our video. So we'll share it with our community and future members of our community. You guys are all members of our community. And it's Friday night. So we want to let everyone know that you guys are all awesome and amazing. And you guys are just as part of this show as we are. Even though the comments are no longer visible, we still we still acknowledge you. We still answer your questions. This was an amazing podcast. You guys made this possible. Thank you, SJ, for helping us make this possible. This was yeah. definitely something that <laughs> we are looking forward to. Um, our season finale is coming up in December. I believe it's going to be December 18th. The season finale of the Geek Survivor podcast. And we're going to think we're going to take a three week hiatus, and then we'll Get come it back strong. Talk. Remember, <laughs> remember the Geek Survivor podcast now. 20% fat free. That means 80% with lots of fat. That's me. 20, <laughs> 80% lean, 20% fat. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty much the best way to describe it. <laughs> All right, guys. Way. If you haven't Format already, make sure you subscribe and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitch. Yeah. And also follow us on YouTube. Also make sure you follow We Rise Project on Facebook. And follow the Keyblade Sonic YouTube channel on YouTube. For his YouTube channel. Which he yeah. uses on YouTube. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> the newest animation I found out made over 
250 views and that blew up really fast i'm like whoa cool. that was like, like the quickest that i ever got <laughs> one of the quickest videos i ever got that many views so hope you guys enjoyed them i'm looking to do more <laughs> all right guys uh also uh we're gonna we're gonna do a podcast next week on sunday with we we rise and hopefully we'll have the black table podcast on here soon we're also gonna start doing gaming content video gaming content that's right we're gonna start even if we don't have a podcast daily we're at least gonna have like you know content every day all right guys thanks for watching i'm jesse goku also known as king mexico this is jace keyblade sonic and sj and that was tom ruger and we're letting everybody know to have a safe and classy night and make sure the balonies on your slacks are are fresh make sure (laughs) fresh make sure you (laughs) gotta change that baloney change the baloney in your slacks (laughs) Don't funky baloney in your slacks. Remember, uh, scrub your hot dog. Good night, everybody.